Vacation. The best time of the year. Two weeks ago, we took a look at employees' vacation entitlement. Today, we look at what Germans do with their Urlaub and where it all comes from. After all, the ferry and summer vacations are coming up or have already started. Ferien? Urlaub? There are two types of Urlaub in Germany. On the one hand, the recreational leave to which every employee is entitled. On the other hand, the actual trip on vacation and the free time at another location. The free time that students have, on the other hand, is called Ferien. Funnily enough, in German-speaking Switzerland, it is the other way around. But we are talking about Germany here and what Germans do. The word Ferien comes from the Latin Ferie, meaning feast day, and refers to the day off school, like the school vacations. In 15. 21, the word was defined in the Imperial Charter of the Holy Roman Empire for business-free days. And from 749, there were also school vacations. The main purpose of school vacation was for children to help the rural population with the harvest. Therefore, the summer and fall vacations were particularly important. Between Christmas and New Year, or rather the Three Kings Day, there used to be the Raunechte. During this time, farmhands and maids were often given time off so that they could go home to their families. There was little work on the farms anyway, and according to popular belief, not even washing was allowed to be hung out on the line. There are up to six different types of vacations in Germany, and they vary greatly in length. Winter vacations are sometimes only one day long and sometimes two weeks, and in North Rhine-Westphalia they don't exist at all. Summer vacations, on the other hand, are six weeks long everywhere, but start at different times. After the summer vacations, the new school year begins. Urlaub comes from the Middle High German Urlaub, which stood for permission to go away. Over time this changed from the permission from the employer to let the task rest to Beurlaubung, one was dismissed or chased away, so to speak, to the knightly promise until the First World War that captured nobles and knights were given Urlaub auf Ehrenwort, a leave on word of honor, to bring their ransom earlier or that captured officers were allowed to look for a job in the city during the day on word of honor or, like a British officer in captivity, to visit his dying mother. If we now combine this, then teachers or parents with school-aged children mainly have the opportunity to take their recreational leave during the school vacations in order to go on vacation with their children. This is also the reason why summer vacations vary from state to state. Apart from Bavaria and Baden-Württemberg, which are always the last to go on summer vacations, the other federal states always alternate with the start of vacations. This can sometimes be as early as June, but sometimes not until the end of July. The background to this is no longer the harvest, but fairness and better availability of resources. Just imagine if all schools in Germany started their summer vacations on the same day and the majority of families wanted to go on vacation on the first weekend and therefore travel by car, on the freeway, by plane or by train. There would be traffic jams everywhere and there wouldn't be many seats available on trains and planes. As a quarter of the federal states are now starting the summer vacations, the whole thing is being equalized. And because 14 federal states alternate, everyone can enjoy early or late summer vacations. In the catalogs of travel providers, you will also see higher prices for hotels in the season, 
like during the summer or autumn vacations and depending on the destination also during Christmas or winter vacations and lower prices in the low season. So if you don't have to take the school vacations into account you can save quite a bit. But how and where do Germans actually travel? In the Middle Ages travel was still a necessity and had nothing to do with a vacation. At most pilgrimage could be considered a voluntary journey, otherwise it was usually about business. Around 1793 Europe's first leader was built in Dobera near Rostock on the Baltic coast. Those who could afford it could travel to the sea, relax or take a cure. In 1799 the first open-air swimming pool in modern-day Germany, the Kreidemannsche Anstalt in Lübeck, was founded. The oldest open-air swimming pool still in operation is probably the Schreberbad in Leipzig from 1866. In 1863 Karl Stangen opened the first travel agency on German soil in Breslau. Of course, his worldwide travels were also something for the well-heeled. In 1900 the world's first cruise ship was built for the Hamburg Amerikanische Paketfahrt Aktiengesellschaft, the Prinzessin Victoria Louise. Before the World World War, only wealthy people could afford such trips. Ordinary citizens might go to the open air swimming pool or the lake. In Fürth, for a long time, until 1955, there was a difference between a Freibad with free admission and a Zahlbad, a public bathing establishment for which you had to pay admission. After the First World War, the increase in rail travel made it possible for civil servants and employees to go on excursions. For workers, there was a third class with the cheapest tickets. In 1926, Deutsche Lufthansa AG started its service and passengers who could afford it could now be flown to the destination. As more and more people flocked from the countryside to the cities, rural regions, coasts, forests and mountains are being promoted as tourist regions. To enable workers to travel, workers' associations such as Arbeiterwohlfahrt or tourist associations such as Naturfreunde or Gebirgsvereine created affordable alternatives so that ordinary workers and their children could also afford a vacation. During the Weimar Republic travel was largely restricted to German-speaking countries. After Hitler came to power the regime took advantage of the desire for recreation and set up the Strength through joy organization as part of the dissolution of all parties and associations. This organization set up recreation homes for workers and their families and built excursion boats, but also offered local evenings with dancing and music as well as handicraft and sports courses. Care was taken to ensure that everything was carried out in the interest of the party and the Führer. During the war, a particularly perfidious type of vacation was added for children and parents, the Kinderlandverschickung. While this was originally also a recreational aspect for the children during the war, children from large cities that suffered from air raids were also sent to the countryside for longer periods of time, where they stayed with the host families, the National Socialist Party Welfare Organization, or in the KLV camps, which were run by the Hitler Youth. There they were able to help in the fields and enjoy the peace and nature, but the states also made it clear to the parents that it could take their children away at any time if they did not behave properly. Of course, the host families were also selected so that they were as loyal to the Führer as possible and could indoctrinate the children accordingly during the time there or in the Hitler Youth Camps. After the war, the Wandervogel movement was revived and school children went on vacations in small groups 
from one use hostel to the next. In the 1950s, with the beginning of the economic miracle, the desire to travel arose again. Western Germans initially stayed here in Germany, traveling to the seaside or the mountain and to Austria. Understandably, Germans were not welcome abroad. But from around the mid-1950s, West Germans discovered Italy. In 1958, 3.5 million Germans traveled to Italy, mainly to South Tyrol, which is largely German-speaking, and to Lake Garda. Then they also began to discover the Balearic Islands and Majorca, and in the 1970s, the Spanish mainland. Those who could already afford it began to travel to faraway places such as Asia. People in the GDR also initially stayed in the country and then have the opportunity to travel to destinations in the Eastern Bloc, like the Black Sea coast in Bulgaria, Romania or the former Soviet Union. In 2021, during Corona, more than one in two Germans, 47 million, traveled. People traveled at least five days, on average 11.2 days. At the time, people spent on average of just 890 euro on their vacation, compared to 1139 euro in 2017. The most popular foreign destination back then was Italy. In 2023, Spain was the most popular destination for longer trips abroad. For short trips, Germans prefer to stay in their own country or in neighboring countries. In 2023, Germans spend around 1,538 euro on their main vacation compared to 1,208 euro in 2019. Vacations in Germany on average around 200 euro cheaper than in other European countries. This year too, many Germans are staying in their own country and if they do, they will probably go to other European countries and probably to Spain or Italy. For long distance travel, they are likely to go to the Far East, what is Asia, North America as a second place and North Africa is third. The number of Germans who could not afford a vacation of at least one week was at an all-time low of around 14% in 2019. This figure then rose again to around 23% in 2022 and due to coronavirus and additional price increases. More than 50% of Germans prefer to go on vacation by car. Then they fly on vacation. Just over 10% travel by train, around 8% by long-distance bus and around 5% by boat. A small proportion go hiking or ride a motorcycle. The use of camper vans or motorhomes has increased in recent years. Germans prefer package tours, like return flights with a two-week hotel and half board as a package. The advantage here is also that package tours are covered in a case something goes wrong. The provider has then to take action and find another hotel or flight. These trips are often cheaper than if you put everything together yourself. However, there is also a disadvantage, such as in the insolvency of the tour operator FTI. This means that the entire trip is cancelled, but the deposit is refunded through appropriate laws and insurance. Some scientists even works out that, with the support of the insurer, other providers take over the trip at no additional cost for the traveler. This is not the case with individual travels. Since the 1960s, the number of travel agencies and the number of trips planned through them rose steadily until around 2001. After that, a lot changed and the number of travel agencies fell steadily, partly due to the increase in online bookings. In 2023, more than 50% of trips were booked online, compared to 37% in 2014. Between 2001 and 2013 alone, the number of travel agencies in Germany fell almost a third.
Conversely, around 6% of German employees worked in tourism in 2019 and contributed around 4% to economic output. That was around 2.8 million people and around 123.8 million euros. The industry is now recovering to almost pre-corona levels. Most of the employees worked in small and medium-sized enterprises such as family-run restaurants and hotels. Where would you like to travel one day? Write it in the comments. More than 50% of Germans primarily want to relax on vacation. They also want to learn or get to know other things. Holiday makers like to stay in one place for a longer period of time. Two weeks on a campsite or a whole week in a foreign city are quite normal. Who wants to rush from one city to the next when you can still get to know so much about the country and its people? And a very typical thing for Germans is travel cancellation insurance, Reiserücktrittsversicherung, so that they are not stuck with the costs in the event of a cancellation that cannot be postponed for due to illness. And of course, international health insurance if it cannot be covered by statutory health insurance in the EU. Even on vacations, Germans like to play it safe. Thank you very much for your attention. I wish you a relaxing vacation. <laughs>